first of all talking about premenopausal women, and this is premenopausal women outside of the setting of pregnancy. The major issue for premenopausal women is how not to get pregnant, what contraception to use, and there are many different types of contraceptives. There's pill forms, um, there are patches, vaginal rings, intrauterine devices, and then also barrier methods like condoms or diaphragms, and we're going to review all of these in detail. To start off with, it's important to remember that any contraception containing estrogen increases the risk of having blood clots. And the risk on the oral contraceptives or any contraceptive with estrogen increases further the higher the dose of estrogen that you're taking. It also increases if you already have an inherited thrombophilia or if you have another acquired thrombophilia. For example, in obesity, the risk of blood clots goes up much further. Women who smoke are particularly at risk, and then the risk increases with advancing age. So for a woman ages 40 to 49, going on the pill is much more risky than for a younger woman. Speaking first about the common form of contraception, the pill, estrogen-containing oral contraceptives. Now these contain both estrogen and progestin, and you need this because otherwise the lining of the uterus overgrows, and this just kind of keeps things in balance. Now when you're taking the pill, there are many different types, and in some of the packages, the dose of the estrogen and progestin vary during the course of the cycle, the triphasic ones you've heard of, and for others, the dose remains the same throughout the cycle. But in general, you take three weeks of the active drug, and then you have a week of placebo during which the woman has a period. Now, there are the newer pills that you've heard of. I think seasonal is one of the marketed drugs where you have fewer periods and take the active drug for longer. Now, the problem with the pill, the estrogen-containing oral contraceptives, is the risk of a blood clot increases about three to four times normal. It is also interesting to note that the newest oral contraceptives, the so-called third generation oral contraceptives, actually carry a higher risk of blood clots compared to the older second generation contraceptives. And it's interesting that what actually happens is the progestin kind of counteracts the estrogen effects on the blood clotting system, and it just so happens that the progestin in the older drugs <laughs> is better at counteracting those effects of the estrogen than the progestin that's in the newer drugs. But regardless, neither of these are safe for women at risk for blood clots. Now, the pill, the oral contraceptive, interacts very strongly if you have a thrombophilia. Now, factor V Leiden is one of the most common inherited thrombophilias in 5% of the Caucasian population. And if you have a single gene, you're a heterozygote for the factor V Leiden mutation, your risk of a blood clot is between three and eight-fold higher. As I've told you, if you take the pill, the combination oral contraceptive, risk of a blood clot is three to four-fold higher. Now, if you already have the factor V Leiden mutation and you go onto the pill, you push your risk of a blood clot up to about 30-fold higher. So this is fairly significant. And a very common scenario that I see is a young woman decides to go onto the pill, and within a month or so, all of a sudden, she's got a swollen leg or breathing difficulty, and we diagnose the blood clot, and then we go and do the workup, and most commonly, we find the factor V Leiden mutation. Now, of course, there's interaction with the other thrombophilias. If you have the prothrombin mutation and take the pill, your risk goes up anywhere between 7 and 60-fold higher, depending on the study that they were looking at. Antithrombin deficiency is probably one of the most serious inherited um, disorders causing blood clots. And if you take the pill when you have this deficiency, your risk goes up to about 100-fold higher. Now moving on to the transdermal patch. This is a newer form of contraception that women are getting accustomed to. It also contains both estrogen and progestin. How it works is you place a patch on the arm, the buttock, or the torso, and you change a patch once a week, and then you have a one-week patch-free period during which the woman will have a period. Now initially when these came onto the market, people were excited. They thought that these would be safer in terms of blood clots, but 
More recent studies have actually shown that there's a twofold higher risk of blood clots on the patch compared to the pill. And the probable reason is that because you're wearing the patch the whole time and you're not just taking a pill once a day, overall your exposure to estrogen is higher and that pushes up the risk. Another form of estrogen-based contraception is the contraceptive vaginal ring. These contain both estrogen and progestin, and they're worn intravaginally for three out of the four weeks. Of course, the four week off is when the woman has her period. The exposure to estrogen has shown to be about half of that of oral contraceptives. And in the studies, they have shown that there is much less activation of the blood clotting system when you're using the vaginal ring compared to oral contraceptives. But studies really haven't shown this to be safer. And I personally have two young women that I've worked with who started using the ring and developed a blood clot, so I personally don't believe that this is a safe option in women at risk for blood clots.